I want the camera to become an organic object of our togetherness. I want them to care so little about the camera that they dare to be vulnerable in front of it, that they dare to show it their emotion, that it becomes so obvious to them that it's there that they do not care anymore. I think we live in a world where masculinity so often is represented as something independent, something competitive, something stoic. Um, I think it's often represented as an armor, rather as, as a sort of tender invitation. And I think therefore we, from a very young age, we murder the beautiful friendships between boys. I think we tell men from when, from when they're young, that the only place to find intimacy is through sex, and it's not to be found among each other. And, and I think that, that realization for me was one where clothes started from. Um, of course, from a personal sense of regret, I regret, I have a strong sense of regret pushing these boys away. And, and I carry that wound as an adult, because it, I really had to unlearn um, keeping people at a distance. I think I, I created so many parts to protect myself that in my adult life I had, to, I had to learn which parts I had created and which parts were really me. So it's, it starts from that personal regret, but I think along the way it became about a sort of universal wound. And I think it's, that is, you know, how, how we smother so often everything which is soft, everything which is tender, and that brutality too often yeah, corrupts the fragile. Eden and Gustav, these two young angels, they um, had never acted before. Hmm? And they read the script at the last stage of casting. And the script, I think, you know, the script is, is it's very, it's, it's, everything is there. Everything is on paper because I wanted them to know everything that this film was about. But at the same time, I asked them to only read the script once. And I do that because what I hope will happen is that they will remember the film. The film becomes a part of them, but not exactly. Uh, because what I want to avoid is that they study the text and they become machines who feel like they want to copy everything is, which is on paper. So what happens then is we have a very honest conversation, a very open conversation, a very philosophical conversation because 13-year-olds say the most wise things. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, wow. They do not say things because society expects or accepts them. They, they're just like, I think this. And usually it's very wise. Uh, so we talked about masculinity. We talked about loss because they have lost. I think grief, I mean, we can grieve if some, someone is still physically there. So they have been through that process. And then we rehearse for six months. And what happens in those six months is I never rehearse any concrete scenes with them, but we will talk about, in a very informal way, you know, we will be making pancakes, and then I will say, why do you think Leo um, doesn't wait for his friend there? And I will not give them the answer, because for me it's much more important that they make up their own answer. Um, and, and, and they just become detectives of of their own parts, and they, it excites them because they're active. It's hard work writing. Writing is difficult. Um, it's beautiful, but it's difficult. Uh, directing is beautiful, but difficult. You have to make cuts in budget. You have to shoot this. You wrote two years on something, and then all of a sudden you can't shoot it the way you want to. Ba 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 ba. But. The story, the things, the pieces came easy to me. They came outside of me. And the world wants, apparently, or a part of the world, wants to see them. What we do 
is subjective. It's hard because that means that you will always have people who love and people who don't love. But it's also a big gift because it doesn't make it... In the end, when you, when you understand that and when you accept it, it becomes what you love. Mm. 